everyone, welcome to the channel. So uh, over the next couple days, what we'll be doing is putting Raptor liner under my 67 GTO. Now I do not have a hoist. I do not have a fancy jig that flips it sideways. I got to basically I've got it jacked up a couple of feet and we'll be crawling under there and doing Raptor liner. Um, so the one thing I'll be doing is trying to find some sort of a hairnet because I don't want that crap all over my head and uh, you know I'll put a paint suit on or something and gloves and you know because I do not want to be wearing it and getting have to cut my hair cut out to you know globs of it on my head but anyway so if you're like me some poor guy just trying to do it in your garage you know how the fancy lifts and everything hang around uh, I'll show you what I did to prepare my floor pans here in the next couple videos, um, short videos, um, all in this video. Um, you know, we're going to seam seal it uh, as well uh, as epoxy prime, seam seal, and then raptor line. So today's goal is to uh, epoxy, let it set up for a few hours, and then we'll come back behind with seam sealer, let it dry, all cure overnight, um, and then tomorrow we'll raptor line. And then we'll let it set up for a week or so, uh, for about a week. And then, well, I can then go on to do other things. Anyway, stick around, guys, and uh, we'll show you, you know, how this goes. Now, I've also covered up my cowl here because afterward I'm going to paint the cowl black. But I'm going to, like I said, paint this like a black satin. Um, so after we get the Raptor liner all done, that's one of the other things we'll do. And we'll also paint the roof the satin black too um, for rust protection, but it's gonna have a vinyl top. Um, but we'll strip all the paint off of that as well, but that's future stuff. All right, everyone. So a couple things I'm doing um, to make sure, you know, uh, in preparation, um, you may not be able to see it very good, but I took a red scotch bright pad. Now these are new floor pans and new trunk pans that I put in. And I took a red Scotch-Brite pad and scuffed this whole area up. Um, all the pans up real good. Um, so that way, you know, they'll adhere. I also then wiped them down. Um, now, I use Windex because I could not get wax and grease remover. And they said that is one of the things when I looked up on the forums that you can use. Now, the other thing I've done is put in bolts um, where all my mounting uh, bolts are, you know, body bolts. So that way, um, now these are just junk bolts. These aren't actual the body bolts, but I you know, threaded these in. So that way, you know, when I go to do the epoxy primer and the uh, Raptor liner, right, I do not fill all these, um, you know, threaded nuts in with garbage and then got to spend a lot of time tapping and cleaning them. The other thing is, if you notice, right, the drains um, for the bra or your uh, uh, cross braces here, um, you know, I basically put a little piece of cardboard in here for these drains because there's not only a drain here, but there's also a drain for the rocker. So I just put a little piece of cardboard in here to kind of, you know, block the drain and the little uh, opening for the rocker. So that way, when I do the Raptor liner over top, that it, uh, um, you know, it doesn't seal these. And then I, after I spray it, I can quickly just pull those out so it, it doesn't harden over that. Um, so I'm gonna get ready here in epoxy prime soon. And then, you know, we're gonna come through and do all the seam sealing in a bunch of areas after the epoxy prime uh, cures for a little bit. Um, I can go four days before I need to, you know, coat the epoxy primer that I'm using. Um, so I'm gonna epoxy prime it and then we'll let it set up for a couple hours. Uh, then we'll go through and seam seal. I'll let the seam sealer set up overnight and then we'll do the Raptor liner or everything. So again, so some of the prep I've done is scuffed, you know, all the panels with the red scotch bright pad. I can put a link in the description. Hardware, right, for all my fasteners go. And then kept, my, you know, kind of put some cardboard where my drains are so that way we can make sure that they, uh, you know, don't get plugged up and that they can still, you know, drain, uh, you know, water out if it happens to get caught in a storm. A few of the other things I need to do is put some tape over top of this so it doesn't go all over the inside of the car. 
Um, but other than that, we're almost done with the prep work to, uh, to get this um, where we can do the epoxy primer. Now, one thing I've also done is put, you can see maybe from the underside of the car, um, I put plastic on the outside of the car to try to keep the overspray to a minimum, keep it under the car um, and not all over the frame, not over my workbenches and everything. Um, and what I'll be doing is I'll lift the garage door up, but I've got this fan here, which I need to reposition. Like so. And as I'm spraying, you know, this will draw the overspray um, into, you know, this. So this is just a blower motor that I've got in a case, uh, like an HVAC blower motor that I've just enclosed. And it circulates a lot of air and it will pull um, this into, uh, you know, the epoxy primer and overspray into this. So like I said, I'll have the garage door up and then I'll have a small fan at the back of the vehicle kind of just gently blowing the air forward so it can get drawn into this. All right, everyone, here's what I'll be using uh, for my epoxy primer. Um, I've used this product before and had good luck with it. Uh, you can buy this, um, you can, you know, go to Summit Racing and buy it, but you can also go to like Amazon, your local automotive paint supply store and get some epoxy prior. DTM stands for direct to metal. Um, but you know, since some of my panels have the, uh, e-code on them, that's why we scuffed them with the red Scot scotch bright pads. And, uh, you know, here is you know, the brand that I used um, that I talked about earlier from Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this stuff. I'll put links in for the, you know, the Summit Racing stuff, but I'll also put in some for Amazon if you want to go that route. I've had this HVLP. This is my primer gun. Um, I've used it for a long time. It's just a cheap porter cable gun. Uh, nothing fancy there. You know, and here I've got a pressure regulator. Um, so anyway, that's just... A quick little background on the epoxy that we'll be using and then once the epoxy you know dries up um, i'm going to try to do two coats of epoxy and then you know i'll do the seam sealer and then after the seam sealer then we'll come over here right and start doing this stuff the raptor liner so i was talking to a bunny of mine guys and he has a station wagon and he ended up going with the six quart kit and almost used all of the six quart kit. So I bought the Raptor liner from Amazon. Um, and it comes with, you know, the six quarts here. Comes with this little eight ounce measuring cup. It came with 32 ounces of activator and then two eight ounce uh, cans of activator as well as this gun. And this gun is pretty darn cheap guys um so you know this plastic handle you can see is way off it's just it's bent badly so i may have to take a heat gun to it and reshape it um so that i can uh get it to spray straight but it'll do the trick that's all that matters uh, it also came with a regulator um as well but anyway I'll put a link to this to Amazon. Uh, the reason I went with the six quart kit is, you know, this is, GTO is a very long car and we are going to be doing, you know, from basically here all the way to the cow and into the wheel wells as well. So that's gonna be a lot of Raptor liner that we'll be spraying. All right, guys, as you can see, or hopefully you can see, you know, we've got it all epoxy primed. Um, I end up doing a couple of coats of epoxy primer and uh, I'm happy the way it turned out. So now we're gonna go ahead and start seam sealing everything up. You know, when I talk about seam sealing, right, we're talking about like where the new floor pan went in here. You know, we wanna seam seal this um, I want to seam seal along there. 
uh, do a little seam sealing in the back there, um, some seam sealing, you know, from the truck trough to the uh, wheelhouse, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, where I put the new floor pan in, we'll seam seal um, to the rocker, you know, that type of stuff. We'll probably, end, I'm not sure if I'm gonna seam seal the, uh, uh, the floor pan reinforcements or not, but you know, we're gonna do a bunch of seam sealing here. And then we're gonna let it set up overnight. And then tomorrow we will come back and probably do a light scup on this. Um, you know, and then go ahead and uh, Raptor line it. All right, guys, so, you know, I did some seam sealing there, you know, a little bit here, a little bit here, you know, did some here where I've welded in the new floor pan to um, this package pan, I guess you want to call it. I did a little bit up, you know, on a few of these areas where the uh, um, floor pan meets the cross brace here. So that's kind of what we did. And then I did alongside, you know, where the floor pan, the new floor pan was welded uh, on, um, you know, kind of to the rocker area there. So we seam sealed all that. What I'm gonna do next is take a couple of my Scotch-Brite pads here, a couple of my worn ones, and just lightly scuff um, the primer. And then uh, we'll wipe it all down real quick. And then we'll go ahead and install the, or start spraying the uh, Raptor liner. All right, guys, so we've got the gun assembled, pretty straightforward. Attach your regulator, you know, attach the, the tube here that was gonna go down inside the bottle. Um, and then, you know, I just ran the gun at 55 PSI, but I'm going to go ahead and shake this real good first for a couple of minutes before I add any of this, the hardener. So we'll just shake this up to make sure this is mixed good. And then we'll pour eight ounces into the little cup here that they provide. Then we'll dump that into the bottle and then we'll shake it real good. And then we'll do a little spray test with this attached at 55 PSI and see how it does if I like the coating. And if I do, we'll go under here. Uh, what they say to do is do your first coat and then, you know, 60 minutes later, do a second coat. But we will see how good this stuff uh, does. I have a buddy of mine that's done a couple of cars with this, really likes it. So he gave me the tips uh, how, to, uh, how to prep for it. And now we'll go ahead and get ready to spray it. The other thing, guys, I'm going to put on is I have a Tyvek suit here. This is actually a true DuPont Tyvek suit. Um, probably time to get rid of it. Maybe after this, it, you know, we'll uh, depart with this suit. Um, but, you know, you can buy these on Amazon pretty cheap, you know, look under like hazmat suits or Tyvek suits, and uh, you can buy these, you know, pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link in the description for a couple. All right, guys, so we are under the car and just looking at everything. Um, we got pretty good coverage um, almost everywhere. Um, there's a couple areas where I was a little light. Um, I held the gun. Um, you can see right there. I'm not sure how I missed that spot. We'll touch that up with a little black paint. Um, you know, but I held the gun about, you know, 16 inches roughly away. And, you know, I'm trying to make sure I got good coverage. You can see like on the back side there was, you know, I kind of missed uh, or didn't get the best coverage. Uh, inside the wheel well, you'll kind of notice, you know, it's hard to get the gun in there. I'll do a little touch up paint. See if we can get that a little better. A little touch up paint in there, you know. It's, that's one of the reasons why I epoxied as best I could. So we'll go back through and uh, with a little paintbrush and just touch up some of that. But otherwise, you can see kind of here, it gives you a good idea of the texture that I was able to get. Um, you know, and then looking forward, you know, you can see all the pans and how they turned out. The one good thing is when I look at like the drains here, you can see 
you know, the drains are free and clear with doing that little bit of cardboard. And then what it is, removed it, just gave it a quick little squirt um, with it just to get the coverage, you know, in the area. Um, so it looks good. But overall, guys, you know, everything turned out great. And, you know, by putting in the bolts, you can see, you know, all my screw holes are nice and clean. I don't have to tap them and thread them or nothing. So, you know, overall, I am very, very happy with how this turned out. Um, just to give you guys a, a look at the underside. Now we'll call up back up top here and we'll talk about a couple things. All right, guys, just a couple of things now that I've finished it. Um, definitely wear a paint suit. If you're doing it on your back like me, that stuff gets everywhere. And it is sticky as F. So my floor, I had plenty of cardboard down, but the cardboard would get that stuff on it. And as you're trying to wiggle around in the paint suit, the paint suit is sticking to the cardboard. Man, it sucked. Um, you know, I had a bunch in my arms, you know, just from the overspray because the sleeves were too short. I had some on my face, you know, it looks a little red because I just got done scrubbing some of it off. Glad I had something on my hair because otherwise it would have gotten in there and I'm glad I got it cut so it's a little shorter. Now, guys, it's been uh, a couple weeks since, um, you know, this has been done. I've got the body shell, you can see back now bolted to the frame and we're actually getting ready to do a little bit of paint work. Um, but if you notice the floor down here, all that black speckle and everything is all the overspray. And I actually took a razor blade and scraped a lot of that stuff off. Um, because even though I had cardboard down, like I mentioned to you, while I was wiggling under there, that, that stuff was just splattering everywhere, getting on the cardboard, on the paint suit. You're trying to crawl around, it was miserable. Um, so expect, so I put plastic down, tons of cardboard, whatever you got to do, um, because this stuff, all the overspray will get everywhere. I said, guys, it's been a couple weeks now since, uh, you know, this stuff is set up. I've got the body now set back onto the frame. Um, and that stuff is set up really nice. Um, you know, because when I was setting the body down on the frame, obviously I had to move it a little bit. It, it didn't do anything to the uh to the raptor liner so the raptor liner has done its job it's nice and you know dry um it's firm hard whatever you want to call it but it looks really good under there um there was a few areas i was light um you know that was real hard to get the gun into and being under the car with not a ton of light you know i had i had flashlights under there trying to trying to see and um i don't know where my one flashlight's at but it got a oh yeah here ton of raptor liner all over it um i basically had to use a razor blade to scrape the lens <laughs> so i could see uh, and continue to use it um you know and it, there were some areas that were just light and so uh, i just took a little rust-oleum paint just kind of touched a few little areas here and there um, you know, so, uh, the primer didn't stick through and it was like in an area, it was real hard to get the gun in and hard to see, you know, so as, what, as good attentions as you're going to have, you may, you know, miss a spot here or there and not get a good a coverage as you think you are here or there. Uh, it is what it is. Um, but you know what? 99% of the coverage was great. You know, there was just a few little areas here or there that I just kind of had to go through with a, a little Rust-Oleum and just kind of touch those areas up. But anyway, I give Raptor Liner a thumbs up. Uh, you know, it, the process went really good. Um, the Summit Racing Epoxy Primer did great. Uh, you know, I'm happy with the Raptor Liner, how it all turned out. So anyway, guys, that kind of wraps it up. Sorry, I really couldn't film spraying the epoxy primer or spraying the raptor liner like i said man if i'd had a phone under there that stuff would have gotten all over the phone and or my camera that i may have used and i, I didn't want to risk that um being under the car now if i could have flipped it on its side or had a lift you know it would have been different um but i hope at least to get an idea of what i went through to prep it um you know do seam sealer after epoxy prime and then, you know, I, I used the scotch Bright after I um, did the epoxy primer, scotch Bright, you know, did scotch Bright all over the epoxy primer, wiped it all down and cleaned it again. And then, 
you know, did the Raptor liner. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope at least gives you an idea uh, that you can do this in your garage, um, you know, a couple feet in the air. Uh, it was a whole lot easier to lift the body off the frame to do it uh, than to try and do it with the frame on the body because you would have missed a lot of areas and gotten Raptor liner all over the frame. I would have made kind of a mess. Uh, so it's definitely worth lifting the body off and trying to, you know, jack it up a couple of feet. So that way you have access to everything. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, um, please comment, you know, um, I'm always open to constructive criticism, um, you know, positive and like I said, constructive, uh, and then, you know, give it a thumbs up, you know, so that way, Whatever nickel I make off of this video is going to go right back into this car. Uh, trust me, I don't make a whole lot of money on YouTube, but what little I do goes into this car so we can uh, complete it. Anyway, thanks guys.